I know a lot of photographers struggle to define precisely what fine art is, let alone release fine art artwork. So if you're curious, allow me to explain. Basically, fine art photography is when you abandon traditional photographic notions such as keeping it natural and aiming to present as unenhanced a representation of a scene as possible. And instead, you use whatever techniques you see fit in order to transform an image into your artistic vision. That means you can crop, mask and replace whole sections of a photograph, daub it in paint colors, distort and twist, apply whatever presets or filters you see fit, and yes, turn color into black and white. Basically, anything goes. All that being said, the vast majority of photographs you'll see with a fine art label are long exposure monochrome images, and in most cases, they are minimalist shots. It's not an aspect of photography I've ever really dabbled in before, because personally, I just love trying to showcase the natural landscape as honestly as possible. But I was inspired by a high key photo I took to give it the fine art treatment. I really loved the outcome and, and I thought it'd be cool to share the process with you guys in case you wanted to try it on your own photos. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the edits I made and exactly how I transformed a photo into something you might see on the wall of the painfully on-trend Bauhaus-inspired minimalist home of a millennial tech mogul or, you know, me mum's back bedroom. To be honest, I always used to feel like fine art was the exclusive preserve of photographic wankers disguising their showy techniques with massively overpowered edits. But I've mellowed with age. And thanks mainly to the excellent videos of UK-based photographer Gary Goff, I've come to see the virtues of minimalist fine art photography. And if you've been put off for similar reasons, then I hope you come around to the attractions of this type of photographic artwork too, because I think we should all just get along with each other. Anyway, enough of the preamble, let's talk practicalities. Here is the photo I've chosen to give the fine art treatment. I shot this by exposing to the right so that I could see all of the detail in the bird. The blown out highlights make this a great candidate for the fine art treatment because it's going to be a lot easier to isolate the main subject. There are many ways to convert a colored image to black and white, but I'm going to use the silver effects plugin in the Nick collection. The first thing I'm going to do is perform some basic tidy ups and remove elements I don't want in the image. But here's the original photograph that we're going to give the fine art treatment. And as you can see, there are some quite distracting elements in here that we definitely don't want in the end image. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a shot of them. So we've got the brand new generative fill here in Lightroom. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this horrible out of focus branch here. So I'm going to select the brush. Make sure I get all the edges in there. Drag that down like that. Make sure there's a little bit of overlap around it. It doesn't work well when it's, you know, a tight um, selection around whatever you're trying to remove. So that should be good enough. Let's hit apply. And let's see how that's done. We've got that one, that one, and that one. I think I'm at number two best. All right, now let's do these little tweaky branches down here. I'll do this in two stages so that we don't mess up the shadow of the bird. So shrinking my brush size, drag that down there, get apply. That's looking good. Oh, I prefer that one where the shadow is better. Let's keep that one. And now let's just finish off with these ones here. Okay, guys, pro tip. You don't have to use generative fill for everything just because it's there. The old uh, heel tool is a lot faster and does just as good a job on little imperfections like these. Just drag it over, let it select a clone area, and nine times out of ten, it does a 
brilliant job. Let's just match that one up. Gone, gone, gone. Close that, see what it's like. A little bit more detritus here. Might just clone that out. How's that looking? Okay, so we finished removing the distractions that we don't want in the finished image, and we're nearly ready to convert it into black and white. Before we do that, however, there's a couple of small tweaks we need to make, which will make a huge difference to the end result. There's two final things I needed to do before I transfer this to silver effects for the black and white conversion. The first was to denoise the image. It was shot at ISO 6400, but it was very twilighty. And I'd run it through the AI Enhance in Lightridge, produce this lovely, cleaned up, beautifully smooth looking DNG file. And the other thing I need to do before I move it over, which is quite counterintuitive, but bear with me, is to increase the saturation. The reason for that is we want to increase the tonal range, which will make for a much more interesting black and white image. So let's bring up the vibrance to about 39 and add some saturation in there so we get this nice and balanced looking and we're now ready to convert the image by increasing saturation and vibrance you amplify the differences between the colors when these colors are converted to grayscale the distinct tones result in a richer and more varied tonal range in the black and white image so don't skip this step our image is now fully prepared for the conversion and we can now send it over to Silver FX. So here we are in Silver FX and as you can see with the neutral conversion with nothing applied to it at all is really nice looking. A little bit flat maybe. Uh, it's quite nice but I want to further isolate the main subject, this bird. And I'm going to use one of the presets down here that does that really nicely which is this classic portrait preset here as you can see we've got even more sort of high key overexposed in this negative space area here and the birds looking beautifully isolate and minimalist over on the left side of the frame there the only small tweak i'm going to do is i want a very slight film grain in there i don't want any of the high iso grains that you get from the you know the more sensitive film types in here so i'm just going to select a ilford pan 50 there and if we zoom in on that i can show you what it looks like let's go up to the head of the bird here we've got very slight film grain which you can see in the feathers in there which is just what i want and that believe it or not is all i'm gonna do in silver fx there's a couple of other tweaks i want to finish off in lightroom before the image is finished in my eyes so i'm gonna send it back to lightroom and we're gonna make those changes Okay, we're in the home straight, guys. We're back in Lightroom. We've got a couple of small changes to make. I just want to further reduce these ripples going out the back here. So I'm just going to grab a linear gradient, stick a big old feather on that, drag it along there like that. And I'm going to turn up the exposure so that the ripples start to disappear behind there. Actually, let's reduce that feather slightly. We've gone a bit too far. Drag that up. There we go, that's looking nice. Now, obviously, I've now overexposed our friend the bird. That's an easy fix, though, with these amazing AI masks, because all we have to do is subtract the subject. And there you go, he's back. Uh, I just want to further reduce these ripples here, so I'm just going to grab a radial gradient, drag out from the edge here, crank up the exposure, and there we go. So, after a few simple changes to my original photograph, a black and white conversion in Silver FX, and some small final tweaks back in Lightroom, we have taken the photograph from this to this. After I'd finished that particular conversion, I did wonder what that bird would look like with a much stronger film grain. So I did a second version with slightly different masking in the water and a heavier grain, and it looks like this. Which one do you prefer? It has to be said, I had a lot of fun converting my photo. While I do prefer the more natural landscape photography, I will definitely experiment with fine art in the future particularly using very long exposure time. So watch this space. If you got value from this content, then do please hit the old like button and consider subscribing 
for more photo, video, and drone-related content from yours truly. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.